Hey, welcome to Loose Change. Still much better than the book version. I'm Jim Evans. Thanks for joining us. You'll be so glad you did. We have a great, great guest that's going to join us in just a moment. Last time we saw you, and it's great to see you again, was back in October, right, Greg? Uh, we're right in the middle of the football season. And, you know, I have to repeat uh, several of the comments I made from that show, but now in bold print to recognize and commend all the people involved in scholastic athletics and academics, of course, to get it all going back in August and then through the fall now into the new calendar year. And what a terrific, terrific job everyone has done to make it happen. Bumps along the way, of course, but uh, here we are, here they are, and uh, just a job so well done. I was one of the skeptics back in the summer that thought, you know, there's no way with fall athletics, especially football, because it's the bigger event with more people and more moving parts, that they'd be able to get through it. But prove me wrong. Again, had to maneuver through challenges, uh, but uh, made it happen and got it done, as did other fall sports, and of course in school as well. So I can't say how impressed I am with uh, everybody that, uh, that made it happen. All the, all, all the coaches and teachers the athletes and participants to stay focused, stay on point, and maneuver through the difficulties they, they may have faced. Um, the bands at the football games were terrific. All the people working uh, the events and games, the parents and fans, just a collective uh, effort. Tremendous job, uh, of course, by the administrators, uh, superintendents, principals, and athletic directors. And I can't say thank you enough to all of the athletic directors that helped us do a broadcast season on iHeartRadio 1390, The Gambler, as we put together a nice football broadcast schedule for you. And uh, hopefully you, you were able to catch some of that, and enjoy that. I know we did, it was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, as one of those athletic directors that uh, accommodated us so well, joins us next, Poland AD, Brian Banfield, will be with us right after this, stick around. There's so much you can do with technology, it's amazing. Armstrong gives you control of your home network and all the entertainment that makes your world go round. If you need help, we're easy to reach for support too. Armstrong, life made easy. Welcome back to Loose Change, I'm Jim Evans and again I have the great privilege to be joined by Poland Athletic Director Brian Banfield. And Brian, it's great to see you, thanks so much for your time and, and before we get going here, Again, I have to thank you so much for all of your help in our uh, football broadcast season back in the fall, and we got a, the great opportunity to, to uh, call a lot of the games, and it was uh, a big challenge for everybody, but yeah. uh, you accommodated everyone and uh, really uh, made it work for us. Well, we, we love having you guys here and uh, supporting our student athletes. It's great. Uh, it was a challenge this fall with the distance requirements and the press boxes, but uh, thanks for having me, and congratulations on making the Curbstone Coaches oh. <laughs> Hall of Fame. I, I was uh, discussing earlier, I, I heard it got moved a little bit, yeah. but uh, yeah. uh, you know, very well deserved and uh, congratulations well, on that. Well, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Yep. And we'll look forward to you in, in that uh, realm one day <laughs> as well. But uh, before we get into a lot of things, what we like to have our victims, or our guests do on the <laughs> show, is for those who don't know, give us a little background about yourself, where you're from, where you went to school, sure. and how your career path took shape. Sure, we'll, we'll do. Uh, Started here, right here in Poland. I went to uh, Poland North Elementary, uh, Poland schools all the way up to the high school right here. This was our high school gym back in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have the field house, so it was kind of neat to sit here today and reminisce a little bit, but uh, played two sports for the Bulldogs. I was a football player with Coach uh, Lamport, my head coach. Reed. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Coach Lamport and uh, Coach Shep was our defensive coordinator. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was a fun staff, then I had Coach McElltrot and Coach Klinger coach baseball for us. Yeah. Uh, so after graduation, stayed around local, uh, ended up working for the schools as a custodian and attended YSU. Okay. Uh, probably, I, I call it the glory years of YSU, kind of fun. You know, Coach Brungard's on staff here and we used to go to games. That's in the glory of the 90s where they were winning titles. Uh, great time to be a Penguin. I look back at those, yep. I cherish those moments. It was, it was a great time opportunity. Uh, from that, I studied physical education and health, got a degree, went on to the magical city, Barberton. I didn't know much about Barberton. I uh, started there as a PE teacher and 
went through the interview process. They like uh, our PE teacher's coach. What would you like to coach us? I love baseball, football. He's like, okay, add basketball. You're a freshman basketball coach too. I said, great. Uh, and I got to know real quick, it's a basketball town. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, yeah. I was like blown away. It was, football was kind of the norm up there, but when basketball hit, I was a freshman coach. I did the clock for the varsity team. And by, you know, game back, back then were six and 7.30. And by 5.30, you couldn't sit in Grendel's gymnasium. I'm like, I okay. remember going over there and doing a couple games. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, it's for real here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, so that was unique. I was there for uh, six years. Then I had an opportunity to move over to Stowe Monroe Falls High School. Mm. I was the head baseball coach there. Oh. Uh, assisted the AD on numerous assignments. If it wasn't in the fall, we, or if it wasn't in the spring, I helped them out in the fall with football, you know, traffic control and all, all kind of stuff, working in the press box and running different events in the winter. I uh, got to know Coach Close, the basketball coach up there. He asked me to help out, so I was very involved up in Stowe. Then uh, two se 2007, I uh, wanted to come back home. Uh, before that, my, my father had passed away, and my, my mom lives to this day in Poland. I thought it would be a great opportunity to come back home, and there was an assistant principal job opened up here. Uh, great opportunity to be a Bulldog again, work with some of the teachers I had at the time. Uh, we're still on staff and coaches. Uh, then uh, Mr. Stallsmith, who was my AD, was mm -hmm. here for 40 some years, yeah, yeah. Uh, stepped down and I went for the athletic director's position and I've been here for the last 12 years yeah. since 2009. It's, it's been great, love working with the student athletes here at Poland and uh, it's, it's just been a wonderful opportunity to come back home. Yeah, you've done a terrific job. and. Uh, was it just to be around athletics again? You were doing, you know, working as a principal, but you wanted to be back in, in that uh, athletic realm to attract you to the position? Or? Yeah, it was uh, something I got when I was working in Bar uh, Barberton under Larry Billingmeyer. He was the uh, current athletic director. And the, 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 the attention to detail uh, was unreal. I watched him because I was involved in three of the sports, and I watched him set up and you know do presentations, senior nights, and it was just you know, fascinating. They were put on wrestling tournaments and we didn't have that here at the mm -hmm. time. And it was great just to watch how he, the prep work and how excited he got on Friday nights. And uh, it was a great opportunity learning for me. And I carried that over to Stowe. I wanted to become a, a baseball coach. And I was an assistant at Barberton. I was able, fortunate to get the head job at Stowe. But again, I was around Kyle Feldman, who's still the current athletic director and just watch him interact and uh, scheduling and, and, and busing and, and just all the moving parts and it was great that how he interacted and signing days I just really took to that and then there was a chance to, to uh, come back here I got my master's in education from Akron U mm -hmm. being up there for those years and uh, worked as assistant principal then when Myron stepped down I, I applied and I uh, got the position as athletic director and it's, it's just been great just, Love working with the student athletes yeah. and trying to provide them as much as we can on and off the field. What's the biggest thing about your, your position now? What, what is the, the main focus? Uh, uh, is, it, is it scheduling? Is it, is, is it the, you know, the setting up the transportation, the people that work, or all of the above? Well, it's, it's a combined, it's, it's a big bowl of support. Getting yeah. coaches hired, you know, you gotta, you gotta have a good coaching staff, which we do here, tremendous coaches. Yeah who work hard, just not in season, but out season, finding the right people to work the games, ticket right, takers, right. sellers, you know, PA announcers. We're fortunate enough to have Thomas John, yeah. you know, call the boys basketball, girls basketball, and also uh, football, football in the stadium. Uh, all those pieces, but scheduling to make sure your, your athletes have, you know, a competitive schedule. We're, we're blessed to be in a league where yeah. a lot of the league schedule is done for you, and you gotta go out and find uh, teams that fit you in all sports for you know your non-league competitive uh, games and the, and it's a challenge uh, it's i enjoy it you know bringing in certain teams and giving our chance uh, to compete at whatever sport it may be uh, but yeah it's scheduling working with the transportation director you know that's i call that the non-covid athletic director yeah. year this year <laughs> you could throw you could throw it all out the window <laughs> since about <laughs> june but it's been a challenge uh, and uh, you know, it's, we're, we, we go, instead of year to year, we plan, like, 
this year normally yeah. get basketball done for next year. This year I'm planning to try to get through Valentine's Day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, through the course of my work, uh, you know, you hear fans and people even come up to me, well, why doesn't this school play that team? Or how come they're not matching up with them? And my response always is, uh, it's just not that, it's easy to talk about, but it's just not that easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't say, okay, we're gonna play this team. You guys, there's so much that figures into it. Uh, and, and that, again, a challenge for you as, as yeah. AD. Yeah, there's, there's certain matchups the fans love to hear, sure. love to dream about. I, I get it, we get it. It's, you know, there's certain ones that we fit that benefit us. Uh, probably the most unique learning curve I had early in my athletic director's career was we were coming off a 2009 and 10 team, pretty good. Uh, Coach Brungard had us rolling with his staff in the tournaments, and we had, you know, the Colin Reardons, the Luke Wallets, yeah. and we were rolling, and you know, with Coach Brungard and uh, current principal, Mr. Procopio, we, we took a chance at Fitch. Well, we learned Austin Town just maybe a little bit too big for us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a learning curve in all parts. And, you know, they got us pretty good the year one. Year two, you know, we fought hard. Uh, but, you, but you're right. You, you want to make sure you give, you know, our kids a, a chance to compete, which they did. It just might have been a little bit more of a reach for us. But, uh, you know, like I said, is that more the case in football, though, as compared to like basketball and maybe some other sports? Uh, I, I don't know what the challenge is for you know basketball yeah, scheduling. Yeah, football's the big one. Yeah. Uh, I know they're expanding the playoffs because you got to right. be careful. Right. It's just not that game. What people don't realize that one you challenge, it's what you get out of it. You, know, you get kids that can cost or hurt or you know or out a couple weeks. Now it's affecting the games you know that you're supposed to compete in and have a chance to make the state playoff. Uh, it, it has helped, though, with the, the playoff expanding. I know they're going to 12 next year, mm -hmm. so that'll definitely help. But the big thing, safety and, and trying to stay healthy with numbers. And, uh, you know, I, I always tell, you know, my girls basketball coach, Nick Blanche and Ken Grisdale and, you know, all the other, you know, congratulations, you're in the tournament. Uh, and, they, and they understand their teams. When they have a good team, you know, hey, we'll go. We, we got a pretty let, – let's go after these certain opponents. If, hey, we're kind of young this year, we, we may have to tone it down a little bit. So I do a lot of input uh, with the coaches, you know, just to find their gauge going into the season. You know, boys soccer, we upped our schedule. We were in a district championship game. Mm -hmm. So we upped our schedule going in a little bit. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a working relationship with your coaches to find that, that nice, even keel blend of a schedule. You mentioned uh, Coach Grisdale mm -hmm. and uh... – you know, one of my favorite guys. And he just got win yeah. number 500 as we take the show yeah. and uh, going to work to add to that. And what uh, I can't say enough about what he has done here and, and, and for this program. And, you know, it carries over not just basketball, but to other sports as well. Sure. As football does uh, sure. for other sports. But he's just been uh, just outstanding. Yeah, he's, he, he's been the rock. He's the, you know, the ultimate competitor. He, he'll tell you, you know, he went to school at Akron U for a – a football scholarship gave him that right and yeah. his direction in life took him on the basketball court I graduated in 1993 he took over that fall and he's okay. been here since yeah and uh, 28 years of hard work and, and good kids and good assistants that stood by him and uh, 500 wins 155 losses that's a pretty good win <laughs> <laughs> winning percentage yeah, yeah he's yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a great it's been a great week for the whole family with his daughter getting right. yeah. uh, leading our our girls program and scoring taking over from Bella Guidos. It's uh, yeah, it's been a, a neat five days for the Grisdale family. No, no doubt. Um, you know, it's, it's, again, it's it's not just football and basketball here. You mentioned the the you know, the, the girls basketball and uh, so many other sports mm -hmm. uh, that have, have done so well and you know. It's success is synonymous with what happens here, um, you know, not only athletically, but academically. Yes, and, and that's, that's the cream of the crop. It's, it's all about, there's no secret, you know, our kids are student athletes. Yes. And uh, how they have to perform in a class, it's, it's important. Just as much as I like handing out all league certifications, it's also nice to hand out all, all league academic honors, 3.5 sure. yeah. or higher. Oh, yeah. And it, it is, it, it, that sets the bar, what we do in the classroom. And it, it also translates on the field that with, with the softball program, winning a title mm -hmm. in 2011 and 
baseball going to Columbus in 2015 and track and field yeah. success and soccer recently and yeah it's it, but it all starts in the halls here at uh, in the high school and it's important and, and the big support of that is our teaching staff the student athletes sure. buy in but of course at home it's it got to have the parents absolutely and the parents support's been tremendous on and off the field well a lot more to talk about we have to take a quick break and uh, we'll be back with more with brian Banfield right here on Loose Change. Stick around. There's so much you can do with technology. It's amazing. Armstrong gives you control of your home network and all the entertainment that makes your world go round. If you need help, we're easy to reach for support too. Armstrong. Life made easy. Back on Loose Change, Jim Evans along with Poland Athletic Director Brian Banfield and uh, Coach We'll, we'll give you that label as well. Um, this past football season, this is what I can talk to specifically mm -hmm. because, you know, you've moved on and have it going here in the new calendar year. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, again, so many challenges, uh, you know, with the COVID situation. And um, what was different for you, if, if anything, but what was different for you about planning for the football season? Because again, football is the big event, more people, more, more things going on. And, how was it different for sure. you? Well, it's, we, we were looking in you know, April, May, June, trying to figure out where we're at, working with the Ohio High School Athletic Association, all of us athletic directors. And within a couple weeks, we got the guidelines and basically the, the, the schedule you prep for, you're ready for, is thrown out the window. We're going from non-league games yeah, yeah. to straight, you know, three through 10, here's your six games you're playing. Or, uh, for you know right right off the bat so it was a challenge you know all your bus schedules all your field trips are done and now okay now you got to number one get the, all your teams ready your football team ready we're going to go to South Range uh, you know forget the season passes the parking passes that's all to the side and, and, and get the stadium ready you know my for the first time my, my football coach is buying decals for his helmets and I'm buying don't sit here signs, wash your hands, and, you know, <laughs> I'm, buying, I'm buying all this stuff for a stadium, yeah. uh, getting it ready, you know, wear a mask and, and doing, normally we're doing uh, shout outs to our other teams, our other teams that compete here, and, and we're doing please remain six feet apart, you know, mm -hmm. Thomas John's up there doing all the yeah, CDC yeah. regulations, so it was different, you know, where normally uh, a Poland Canfield game, we get close to maybe 6,000 people. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we couldn't play it this year. And yeah. if we could play a game, you know, we're limited to 220 visitors and mm -hmm. 600 families and band members and cheerleader and football families to watch on the home side. So it was, it was unique. It, you know, there's no homecoming dance. That's right. always been important here. The parade that, that goes on at the stadium and, and with the students. And, you know, it's just been a... We're, we're, we always go back, hey, we're playing. At one time, you could say, hey, we're playing football and the Buckeyes aren't. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, yeah. That's why I tell the kids when, you know, we can't have a spaghetti dinner in the school. Well, but understand, hey, we're playing football in Ohio State and the Big Ten's at home at this point. Yeah. So that was, uh, it was a challenge. But, uh, you know, we work well together. Our conference athletic director is moving. And it's just like when you're playing a football game, people understand, okay, there's a JV game. Well, now your field may have a soccer game on it yeah. because it's a Saturday morning, JV. All right, what about the freshmen that week? Well, maybe you have a Thursday night soccer because that schedule, that didn't move. So one, one domino <laughs> led to the other, and you're just trying to make sure to accommodate all the kids who work so hard, and you want to try to give them as much normalcy as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I just, you know, the games that we were able to do this past year, you know, I can't say enough about how the teams handled it. The bands were, were terrific, those mm -hmm. who, you know, participated. Sure. And, and all the fans, uh, you know, complied with it yeah. seemingly from yeah. our perspective that what they were supposed to do and, and everybody made it work. Yeah, it was, uh, the fall was a challenge uh, at first, but the, the parents did a great job and, uh, you know, working with opposing athletic directors, the fans coming yes. in from the, is staying six feet apart yeah. in the restrooms or getting something in the con concession stand, right. everything was, you know, it, it was really nice to see. And, and like, you know, we talked earlier about just competing and all the way through the season, like we had, you know, championships in all of our fall sports, which great. was great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
It was a different set of rules and guidelines coming in the winter. That's been another challenge, yeah. but uh, you know, yeah, it was great. Everyone worked together, and it was we we did the best we could, and the situation yeah. was given, and and I think the student athletes were very pleased, and the parents. Absolutely, uh, you know, you mentioned the the modified football mm -hmm. season, the regular season, and then the expanded playoffs mm -hmm. where everyone was invited to come in, like basketball. Mm -hmm. Of course, some teams, you know, schools had the option to opt out, which sure. some did, but. Uh, I thought it was kind of fun. I mean, I don't know if it works, you know, for everyone, but uh, having everybody uh, involved and having that chance to compete in postseason, and it gave you guys extra extra games as well to sure. host. And, yeah. Uh, I, I thought it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. I did too. The, with the circumstances at stake and uh, the guidelines in place and the six games and allow everyone to – experience a tournament yeah. game yeah. And, and hey if if you got beat early and you wanted to keep playing right. yep. there was an option for mm -hmm. that for those those teams as well uh, so yeah I, I thought the options the OHSA gave us and what they presented us you know was the best they could do and, and schools ran with it, whatever they chose opt out of the tournament play a couple more weeks mm -hmm. uh, again it was just trying to get the kids to participate you know it's their senior year some of them trying to give them the best normalcy as you could how has it been different now in, into the winter sports? Is it just mainly because it's, you know, indoors the indoors, yeah. the indoor setting, the, the attendant policy was, it was a little bit foggy at first. The governor said no fans. The right. OHSA came back right, and right. said parents only. So it, it, that's been a challenge. Uh, you know, you're making sure you're doing what you could for the parents and home and away and just working with, we have a league system in place. It's like a voucher card. Some we use rosters, you know, parents go check in. So just different procedures, constant communication. Uh, with when Trumbull County went down, you know, our folks and we half our conference from Trumbull County went down right before Thanksgiving. They made yeah, that. Right. You know, that's we had over uh, 22 cancellations coming up in December. So you're moving pieces and trying wow. to get them in and move the Mahoney County and Columbiana schools to fill the December. So, you, I mean, you're right off the bat going like you did for football. Hey, here's a schedule. And then you might as well just, you know, toss it away and try to rebuild a basketball mm -hmm. schedule. And uh, we, the COVID numbers were up. And you could tell you you get that phone call from, oh, you know, someone's calling. Uh, oh, this, you know, what what's, and they might get shut down for 14 days. But biggest thing is, you know, being part of the athletic director's network around in the county, working together, trying to fill those slots. So you give, you know, it was kind of kind of neat and kind of odd, like you're giving a senior night for the girls' basketball game. You know, it's not even Christmas yet. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, our boys is tomorrow night um, at the end of January, just how it worked out. But, yeah, it's been a challenge. And, and like you said, mostly due to the confined seatings, the smaller gyms, and, and being indoors. How has this affected, uh, you know, your athletic budget? If, if yeah, there, has, is, there uh, is no budget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, uh, it's 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 been tough. Yeah. I mean, there's no secret. Uh, it's been tough. Uh, we are, you know, we do a lot of uniform purchasing, equipment purchasing, you know, on on the funds we get for gate receipts. Okay. And it's, you know, you're talking a. A, a Poland Hubbard gate, which is normally I don't twelve to fourteen thousand yeah. dollars, and it's thirty two hundred. Right, right. Uh, for a football game, right. or a Poland Canfield boys basketball game is you know three thousand uh, yeah, dollars, yeah, yeah. and you're you got four hundred and seventy two dollars to turn in. So, yeah, it's taken its hits. Our, our coaches have adapted. You know, really not much. You know, want list or wish list. I mean, other than the mm -hmm. bare you know essentials, which nice going into the spring we purchased all that so you know the baseballs the softballs and whatnot so we're ready to go into spring sports because it came last year the virus right before it started so we won't have too much but yeah it's it's been a challenge and with our booster club events normally we run this weekend little kids tournament here but with the amount of you know again people that could come in the gym at once that's canceled for this year yeah. so yeah, it's, it's taken its toll on a lot of our clubs, organizations, and, and our programs. Well, you mentioned spring sports and, you know, opportunity to get outside again, mm -hmm. obviously, so that'll help. And we're obviously, I hope all of us are hoping for better things ahead through the summer and then into next fall or this coming fall. Uh, but 
in the event that maybe we're not quite where we need to be, at least you have this experience you know, that you've had to yeah, this point no, to fall back on in case things do change again. You're right. If, it, it'd be great to hear that we're going back to you know, where they right. were fall of 2019. I could rip off about, you know, I don't know, about 300 don't sit here stickers and yeah. wash your hands and all. <laughs> but if, if it's not the case, we're prepared. We have somewhat of yeah. a guideline like, okay, we, we've been through this structure and you know, where to stand on the sidelines and how to set that up for the teams and you know, the protocol of you know, whether mm -hmm. it's hand pumps near the, the wash stations and stuff like that in the bathrooms. So, yeah, we have a good understanding of that. Let's, let's hope it's you know, a little bit looser and the, the vaccine rolls out and yeah. uh, we, we get a little bit closer you know, to where we, we have those fans and you know, when, when we crank back up in the fall of 21. Do you think uh, um, that, uh, just your gut feeling that, and again, it's all contingent upon how this all goes with what we're dealing with, but that we'll have a, a full high school football season and, uh, you know, you mentioned the expanded playoffs uh, coming yeah, up. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I think okay. we're on the right path. Uh, the OHSA is, you know, their, their numbers haven't changed for next year. Their start dates and stuff like yeah. that. It doesn't you start know. a week earlier this yes, year? Yeah, yes, Feb yeah. Or up February. August 20th, yes. the first Friday. Friday, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that, and uh, nothing's come out of there. I'm hoping everything mm -hmm. keeps improving sure. with the country, the safety, uh, as we get closer and closer. But, yeah, I, I, I think we're going to have a full fall season and get a little bit, like I said, closer to normalcy. Maybe that goes up to 50% capacity or right, 75, right. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that's, that's what we could hope for. Well, we only have a moment left, but mm – -hmm. uh, you know, we're talking about football, and of course, uh, as we tape the show, you're in the market for a new coach. Mm -hmm. And what a privilege it was for me to uh, work with and get to know uh, Ryan Williams. Mm -hmm. and of course, uh, my relationship with Mark Brungard, Reed Lamport before that. So, you know, there's been a connection for me. But uh, now, now uh, you know, uh, a new uh, person to come in, and how's that process going? It's going well. We had uh, 18 applicants that applied for the job, and we met as a search committee. It was myself and four other individuals. That started last week, going through the application process. And the last two days, Wednesday and Thursday, we, we brought in seven of them um, and, and got to really know um, the individuals as football coaches and just as, you know, regular day, yeah. you know, what, what, what's it like? Mm -hmm. And uh, we met last night, we met this morning, and we're going we're gonna to move forward to the final round with three candidates who I'm all excited about, mm -hmm. all three of them, next week with the superintendent. And uh, I, I, think, uh, I think the district, the kids, the, the parents, the community will be proud uh, of our 15th football coach when is, we announce it. Well, we'll look forward to that for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll certainly look forward to uh, getting back uh, over here uh, in the fall to, for, for more football. Can't, Can't thank you enough again. You do a terrific job. And uh, best of luck the rest of this uh, school year and then into the fall. And we'll see you then. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. All right. Ryan Banfield, and uh, we'll be back to wrap it up here on Loose Change right after this. High school sports, community events, all of your favorite local shows are calling the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel their home. Find out everything your neighborhood has to offer on Channel 100 or on YouTube. Spirit, town pride, local communities. This is the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, thank you so much to Brian Banfield and uh, best of luck to the Bulldogs. Uh, thanks, as always, to Greg Roden, all of you for watching. And again, you can catch us on YouTube. Just go to Armstrong Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next time. Stay safe. Catch us here again on Loose Change. <laughs>